Hi there, if you want to make your colors really pop in DaVinci Resolve, one of the ways you can do this is by increasing the saturation of those colors. Now I'm going to show you three ways to do that in DaVinci Resolve and the first way is the way that I learned as a beginner when I started color grading DaVinci Resolve and it's the most obvious one but the other two techniques are I would say more kind of medium or pro level techniques and they're probably going to give you a better result and a more subtle result and dare I use the C word not the four letter C word the cinematic C word but let's just say filmic so we don't upset anyone with sensitivities to the C word so let's head into resolve and I'm going to start off by showing you the first method so I've got this clip and I've already done three basic adjustments to exposure, contrast and color balance. And in this node here, we're going to want to increase the saturation. So this first method is the one that I would have used or the one that I did use when I first started learning about color grading in DaVinci Resolve. And that's to switch over to the primaries here and you can switch between these controls. But this is the one you want, the primary color wheels. And there's a couple of controls we can use in here to increase the saturation and the vibrancy of the colors. I'm going to show you the first one and it's not one that I recommend you use hardly ever at all but I just want to tell you about it in case you're tempted to use it and that's this one down here called color boost and what this will do is as we increase it it will increase the saturations of colors that don't have much saturation already and I'm just going to completely overdo this and you can see very quickly that things start to look terrible start to look a bit like an oompa loompa so I'm just going to double click to reset that if you ever do think you want to boost those less saturated colors and you decide to use color boost I would highly recommend a trying not to use it but if you do need to use it just use a very 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 small amount and just take care what's happening in your image but in terms of saturation the main big saturation control is this one down here sat and this defaults to a value of 50 and if we just hold down the left mouse button on the word sat and slide to the right this is going to gradually increase the saturation of the entire image and if we slide it all the way to the left to a value of zero it reduces the saturation in the whole image giving us a black and white image so let's go and increase this and we'll just keep an eye on the screen and let's go somewhere about 72. Another tip is to come over to the right here and click on this button to open up your scopes and you can change this to the vector scope and that's going to give you a readout of where your colors are. The further these are out to the outside of the circle or the longer these bars are the more saturated colors are. So if I just hit Control D to disable the node you can see they go into towards the center that means less saturated and if I re-enable the node these lines and the colors pop out to the edge so that's one way you can judge your saturation using scopes I'm not going to go into scopes too much in this video I'll do a separate video on that so make sure you subscribe if you want a beginner's guide to using scopes in DaVinci Resolve one of the interesting things about using the saturation control in the primaries window there is that as you increase the saturation you're also going to be modifying the brightness or the luminosity of those areas that are being affected by that saturation increase. Let me just show you what I mean. I'm going to zoom in here with the mouse wheel and I'm going to change the scopes from vector scope to waveform and what you can do is click these three dots and you can turn on display qualifier focus and if you choose this little qualifier tool when you hover over the areas of the image you can see this dot down here is telling us where things are. Just going to open the settings so as I'm hovering over the image you can see this little circle is telling us the brightness levels of the image. Just going to scroll across here and you can see this little dot down here in the scopes is this yellow of this speaker. If I disable the node by hitting Ctrl D watch what happens to that little dot. It actually gets slightly lower or its luminosity or its brightness levels have decreased. If I re-enable this you can see how the brightness levels of that area increase and this is one of the side effects of using the saturation control in the primaries window in real life in the real world with physics as you increase the saturation of something its luminosity or its brightness actually decreases so this is not really modeling how the real world works by using this saturation control in the primaries window so if you want a more filmic or c like result we're going to move on to the second method now so we'll go and disable this node, we'll hit Alt S to add a new node and instead of using the saturation tool in the primaries wheel we're going to come across here 
and we're gonna click on this icon to open up the Color Slice tools. So this is a pretty complicated looking toolbox if you've never seen it before. And if you want me to do a full video going in depth on the Color Slice tool, I'm happy to do that for you. If you want me to do that, just leave a comment. So we're not gonna look at all of these controls because it's a bit overwhelming. The control we're gonna mainly look at is this SAT control here. And this looks very similar to the saturation control that we saw in the primaries window. However, the algorithm or the maths that make this saturation control work are different from the previous version we just looked at. The main difference is that as we increase saturation, it's going to model the real world. And what that means is it's not going to increase the luminance of the saturated areas. So once again, we'll make sure we turn on qualifier focus. And if we hover over here, you can see this dot at the bottom giving us the luminance value for this area of the yellow speaker. So watch what happens down here when I increase the saturation. Notice that that area has actually decreased in luminance or brightness. I'm gonna hit Control D to disable this node and watch what happens down here. See how that dot for that yellow bit moves up? If I re-enable it, the dot for that yellow bit moves down. So in essence, if we use this saturation control, the more saturation we add, the less bright those saturated boosted bits become. And this models the real world more closely. And what that means is you can often get a more filmic or a more real life or a more cinematic result using this control instead. This is what's known as a subtractive model. It's subtracting light as saturation increases. Let's move on to method three. We'll disable this node and we'll add a new node. Oh, and it wouldn't be a YouTube video if I didn't ask to please subscribe if you want more DaVinci Resolve tips and tutorials. So let's go and use this node to make changes using the third method. So this method I learned from Cullen Kelly, what you need to do is on this new node, right click, we're gonna make a couple of changes to how this node processes things. The first thing is we need to come down to color space and currently this is set to use timeline and that's the default. What we want to do is come down here and change the color space that this node is working in to H. SV. The S in HSV stands for saturation, so that's what we want to be modifying. To make sure we're only going to modify that S channel, the saturation channel, we're going to come down to channels here and we're going to turn off channel 1, which is the hue, and come back down and turn off channel 3. And as you can see now, this has left us with only channel 2 selected. So we're only going to be modifying the saturation when we make changes in this node. So when we looked at the previous version using Color Slice, if we're just using that one slider to increase the saturation, it doesn't really give us any fine grain control. And there's a lot more you can do in Color Slice, but we'll just keep it simple for now. With this third method, it's going to allow us to actually change the saturation curve for different areas of the image. And let me show you what I mean by that. So now we've got this node set up to HSV and we're only operating with channel two, we can once again, use the primaries palette, but we're not going to touch the saturation control down here. We're actually going to touch the gamma and the gain. When we modify the gamma value, it's going to target areas of the image that in terms of saturation are already on the lower to medium end of saturation. And when we change the gain, it's going to allow us to affect the saturation levels of areas in the image that are already quite saturated. So in this way, we can play one off against the other and create a, almost a curve of a relationship. And we can modify the saturations of those different areas of the image separately, rather than just using one saturation value or slider, which affects everything the same. Just hit Z to zoom out and we'll make a bit of space over here. And we'll go and start to modify the gamma settings. If I increase the gamma, you can see that saturation is gradually increasing. And if I decrease the gamma, you can see saturation is decreasing. Just reset that. And the same thing happens if we modify gain. I'm going to increase the gain, and eventually you'll start to see that saturation increase. And if I decrease the gain, you can see that saturation decrease. Again, we can switch back from the waveform scope to the vector scope to give us an idea of the color. And you can see we've got this little tiny dot in the middle telling us that everything is completely desaturated. So I'm going to reset the gain. So remember that the gamma setting increases the saturation of things that aren't already very saturated. If I zoom in a little bit on this gray t-shirt, so there's not a lot of saturation here. You can see as I'm scrolling around here down in the vector scope, the circle is staying almost near the center, telling us that this t-shirt is very desaturated. 
I'm going to start to increase the gamma value just by holding my left mouse button down on this wheel and dragging to the right. And as I do that, you can start to see that this t-shirt is kind of appearing a bit more saturated. And now if we hover over now, it's tending more towards the blue area. You can also see this has affected the saturation of my face if I hit Ctrl D to disable the node and Ctrl D to re-enable it. If I disable it again, you can see that we already have a little bit of saturation in the skin tones here and on the vector scope you can see that it's not in the center of the vector scope, it's actually up to the top left towards the skin tone area. I'm going to re-enable that node and because we can target the already saturated areas of the image with gain, if I hold my left mouse button down here and start to reduce the gain, it's going to reduce the saturation in that face. If I hit Ctrl D to disable, you can see how this t-shirt is grey. If I hit Ctrl D to re-enable it, you can see how this t-shirt is starting to get a bit more colour now. So using this method gives you a bit more control over how the saturation is applied to different parts of the image. All right, so here's the big question. Which one of these three methods should you actually use? If you're just starting out with colour grading and you're just getting started learning DaVinci Resolve and colour grading and everything that you can do with it, I would suggest that you go and use the colour slice tool and just alter this saturation value. And I would forget about using the saturation control in this primaries colour wheel. That's because this color slice saturation control is gonna give you probably a more realistic image and it's not gonna make those colors that you increase the saturation of unnaturally bright in your image. As you become more confident with color grading in DaVinci Resolve and you train your eye to see the differences in colors and luminance values and assuming you've got a decently calibrated monitor, you might want to move on to that third approach where we took this node and we changed its color space to HSV and we just turned on channel two. That's going to give you a little bit more control over what you do and how the overall image is affected. Check out this video next. I'm Jason Roberts. Please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.